All right, it's just 645, so we'll see if we can get started on time and stay on time. I'll call the joint meeting of City Council and Board of Finance to order. We'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm just noticing it too. There is nobody in the audience. It's, you could tell when it's the first night, night, nice night of the year here. And everybody's tired from the UConn win last night too. All right, let's start with the approval of the minutes. Number one, uh, these are the meeting minutes from March 12th. Move approval. Second. Any changes or amendments? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we'll go to the consent agenda, which is A through L. Does anybody wish to withdraw anything from the consent agenda? No, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody opposed? Motion carries. Number three is a transfer of $28,850 from the general fund contingency account to human resources. Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any comments, questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries, carries, excuse me. Board of Finance to transfer $8,135 from the general fund contingency account to the Board of Finance for professional fees. So move. Second. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Diane, that is the fastest to your report. Um, I know you're not ready, but we'll do the monthly reports. <laughs> She's always ready. So this is gonna be a quick oh, perfect. There we go. Good. Um, you might actually start a council meeting on time for a long first time. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. And it is a beautiful day out. I actually did get out for a little bit. It's nice. Um a couple of things I just want to point out. If it was in the report, but tax revenue through um through March was at a 98.9%, uh, but this report did not reflect a collection that um, Ann was pursuing. Um, so she collected right after uh, we ran the Munis report, an additional payment of $135,000 in taxes. Um, so that is reflected in her charts. So there's just point that out. She's been doing a great job going after some of the um, delinquent collections and you working with Corp Council's office. I know it's uh, been a joint effort on their part. Um, prior year tax revenue, where everything is pretty much in line with where we were last year, um, and our motor vehicle SUP, I think we will come in about four to five hundred thousand dollars more than last year. Um, building permit revenue, we're slightly behind where we were dollar wise. We're at one hundred and six point five percent of the budget. Conveyance fees um, were slightly behind, but last year we did receive one huge conveyance on a transfer of property. So it's a little bit uh, skewed from last year. Investment earnings, I do want to say we're doing very well there. Um, as I reported last month, we had have made some changes in some of the um, cash flow and some of the accounts. So we're actually earning uh, more interest. Um, so I anticipate we're, we're doing really well. I mean, right now we're at 151%. $1.4 million, I anticipate, based on what I'm seeing right now, that we will exceed $2 million in investment income. So um, that's really good news. Um, what I do want to just point out, I was asked uh, earlier where we think we might end the year. Just on revenues alone, I estimate there will be about $3 million in surplus from a couple of different areas, investment income, taxes, conveyance fees, and then also there was that $1.6 million grant that we received that um, the municipal revenue sharing, which we didn't budget because we can't count on it. It would be nice if we can, because it would help next year. Um, but uh, all of that is about $3 million. Um, on the expenditure side, nothing new to report from what I've been saying with public works, uh, fuel and supply costs, and our liability insurance. But just taking a quick look at the city accounts. Um, I know we will have definitely some funds left over in our snow accounts, probably about $450,000 um, if we make gray to the line. <laughs> um, and then on the contingency, uh, right now after tonight's actions, there's 747,000 left there. So right there, very conservative estimate, about a million dollars uh, just on the expenditure side. And again, that is conservative. Um, 
I wish I can give you more information on the Board of Ed, but I know at the last report they gave the Board of Finance, they were running at about a $4 million deficit without um, not knowing what the excess cost reimbursement was going to be. But I know they are working really hard to kind of bring that number down and have uh, done a spending freeze. Um, as you know, the budget was presented uh, in total last Wednesday. Uh, the next workshop right now is still scheduled for next Wednesday, the 17th, but if not needed, it will be uh, canceled. And then the Board of Finance will be voting on uh, April 23rd. I wanted to say August, but April 23rd, uh, they'll be voting on it. And then you all vote on it at the joint meeting May 20th. So are there any questions? There's not too many, too much other stuff going on at this point. You have to wait, easy night. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anything on Zoom? I was just scanning the room here. We didn't have anything. Anybody from Zoom? No. Nope. I think we're good. Thanks, okay. Diane. Enjoy, Enjoy the evening. You can still have some light out there. Yeah. Uh, without any other business come before us, correct? I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? We literally have a nine-minute break. Can't start the meeting before seven, so we'll start right at seven. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. The mic knows from how were your seats at the uh, final it, four? It, yeah. Because, yeah, they weren't bad. So it was about next to Ray Allen. That's it. <laughs> and Calvin was on the other side. All right, it's 7 p.m. I am going to call the city council meeting to order and ask that we all join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag to my right. Oh. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So uh, first things first, congratulations to UConn last night. I think I have probably 50 requests on Facebook to have a Donovan Klingon parade. Uh, we'll work on it. I don't have that much authority on that, I don't think. Uh, but his agent did reach out to me today and say Donovan would be interested. I don't know what that really means, but we'll find out. And congratulations to the Huskies. Just for the record, too, this is the fourth championship in a row that Donovan Klingon has brought home. So in his 
uh, junior year, it was a COVID year, so they didn't have a state championship. They had regional finals throughout their um, conferences, and they did win that conference with him there. He won the state championship with Central, and now two in a row here. So it is a, an amazing feat, and uh, great for Donovan. So go UConn. Um, I do want to also just make an announcement, and we'll do a moment of silence for this, that is uh, an unfortunate uh, incident that happened that maybe some of you heard about. So Albert Saunier, who is somebody I actually went to school with, a disabled uh, gentleman, if you ever went to one of the Blues games, he would be stationed right outside of the gate where you have to have your ticket already. Unfortunately, he was hit, hit by what I think was a distracted driver and uh, succumbed from his injuries after a couple of weeks. And I think it's just a good reminder to all. And of course, we have nobody here today or nobody on Zoom, but maybe somebody watching this after um, is that we need to be very careful out there. We're, as we get a livable, walkable downtown, um, we need to pay attention to what's going on out there. So our condolences to his family. And I'd like to take a moment of silence for Al. Thank you very much. All right, we go from happy to a little sad, but we will end on a, a better note. I see Scott out in the uh, audience, and I just wanted to uh, read a proclamation in a second for National Library Week. Uh, but I wanted to also personally thank Scott, since he is the only employee here right now. But today is actually National Librarian uh, Appreciation Day. And so we thank all of our uh, people that work in both of our public libraries. They do a great job. They did a great job through COVID to keep things open, and they continue to innovate and do a great job. So here is a proclamation that we'll present to you in a second, but let me go ahead and read it. And actually... I told Kirsten she needs to print this bigger next time because it's getting harder and harder to read. Uh, so it's a little lengthy. Hang on with me. Whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions striving to ensure equitable access to information and services for all members of the community. Whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, developing and expanding collections, programs, and services that are as diverse as the population they serve. Whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals. Whereas libraries play a pivotal role in economic development by providing resources and support for job seekers, entrepreneurs, and small businesses, thus contributing to local prosperity and growth. Whereas libraries are treasured institutions that preserve our collective heritage and knowledge, safeguarding both physical and digital resources for present and future generations. Whereas libraries are an essential public good and fundamental institutions in democratic societies working to improve society, protect the rights of free speech, lifelong learning and literacy, and promote free exchange of information and ideas for all. Whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Jeffrey Cajano, mayor of the Bristol of the city of Bristol, Connecticut, proclaim April 7th through 13th, 2024, to be National Library Week in Bristol. During this week, I encourage all residents to visit the library and make use of the services and opportunities they unlock for us every day, and they should get their library card if they don't already have it. We've been increasing uh, that for the years to come. So congratulations to you, Scott. I want to hand you the proclamation. Thank you, Scott. Well, look this way and smile. Hey, yeah, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Give me your photos first. And hold it. We, I didn't stay there long enough either. That's too bad. But we need you, not me anyway. All right. Just hold it up. Yeah, we don't need him. No, exactly. I don't. <laughs> it's a better picture now. Thank you very much. Turn this, this way. way. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, number two is the approval of the minutes. Um, I'm going to do them separately, and I'll tell you why in a second. The approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting on March 12th, um, I believe we have one amendment. So we did have a voice vote, and there was one vote in opposition in 6B. So I just wanted to um, entertain a motion to accept those meeting minutes with that change. So moved. Second. 
Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And B is the approval of the special city council meeting held on April 4th. Can I have a motion to approve? Move we'll approval. Second. Any comments, questions, additions, or changes on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Public participation. I don't think we have any in the room here. We do not. Anybody on Zoom wish to speak under public participation? Could at least say hi, Dante. Break up the not <laughs> quietness. No, that's all right. I'm going to enjoy this because I'm tired from last night. So we'll keep moving. Number four is announcements. I'm going to start on my left. Go ahead, Andrew. You're going to start this month. Okay. Uh, another reminder, it's time for kindergarten. Got to get your kids signed up for kindergarten. If they're going to be five years old on or before September 24th, they're eligible. You can find all the forms needed on the Bristol Public Schools website onto the links through the main page, including the waiver, if your child will turn five during the fall of 2024. And if you feel they're ready for kindergarten, they are welcome to be registered at the same time. All children who are registered by the end of the school year will be entered to have their first day of school on a fire truck or I think a police officer as well. This are we having this? I think they're well? two. Ooh. Two fire trucks. Oh, so two fire trucks. Okay. Sure. Well, Excellent. You have an option of two of the fire, one of the fire trucks. <laughs> um, and then on June 29th, the SRC is coming put together a family fun day on June 29th with a rain day of January 30th. They're looking for sponsors and vendors and the forms and register are all on the Board of Ed website. Um, they also have the Appetite for Reading has a basket of books for the Head Start on Lake Avenue. And they have a free library put out St. Vincent de Paul Mission. They'd like to build two more, but their cost about between five and seven hundred. First uh, little free library was at the WIC was refurbished by a Eagle Scout. So if anybody knows any Eagle Scouts or people that want to volunteer to redo these libraries, uh, I'm sure they would appreciate, to, appreciate you to do it or know somebody that can. Um, the Sports Hall of Fame is hosting a sports trivia event on Wednesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. at the Historical Society. The doors open at 6 to, uh, 6.30 p.m. Teams of up to four will be allowed. Individuals may be able to, to sign up with an assigned to a team Advanced sign-up is encouraged. You can contact Dave Mills at 930-8369 or Bob Freemuth at 978-7517. Uh, and the summer programs are live on the public are on the Parks and Rec Department. Uh, you can go right through BristolMyRec.com. Thank you, Andrew. Cheryl? Yes, I would like to start with the upcoming events at um, Downtown Bristol Live. On the 20th, we have the Drifters. Now, this is 20 years of uninterrupted hits that made them the most second most uh, successful recording artist of all time. And some of the songs you may remember are Up on the Roof, Under the Boardwalk, Dance With Me, Stand By Me. This is concerts almost sold out, but tickets are still available for $40. That is on Saturday the 20th. Um, but the big event that we're all excited about is, and I brought my prop, so we have Star Wars days coming May 4th. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to, I better go to Padawan training. Okay. <laughs> um, may the 4th be with you at Downtown Live's Star Wars Day. This event, it starts at 3 p.m. and goes all the way through 930 for the admission price of $20. There'll be an art gallery. There'll be pictures taken with your favorite Star Wars characters. Bristol Public Library is giving away some books with Star Wars themes. There's um, a podcast. There's a Padawan Training Institute. And then the movie. So that is on Saturday, May 4th. Um, okay, you can stop now. <laughs> um the City Arts and Culture Commission is going to be holding our section second. Cultural Arts Festival on Saturday, June 8th. And at this point, we're looking for artists that want to be part of the festival. 
I encourage you to contact Ariana at the Parks Department if you are interested. I have a link on my Facebook page, my City Council Facebook page, and we'll share that on some of the other pages. So it's a call for artists at this point. This weekend, however, is another event, and this is the annual OM show. This is the annual fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Club of the Bristol Family Center. Tickets can now be purchased at the door for $40, but the option to order dinner is no longer available. Those had to be done by last night. The show is this Friday and Saturday. Showtime is 6.30, and it will be held at the Carousel Museum. Um Eric's going to do the fishing derbies. Um, so I'll just add, I don't know if do you have the Pine Lake fishing derby. I do not. Okay. Do that one because I don't I actually don't have the date. Okay. Right now. Yeah, I don't have the I didn't Pine find Lake the date fishing derby the tournament will be Saturday, May 11th. That's Mother's Day weekend from 7 a.m. for those five through 15 years old. Um, Pine Lake, um, which is off Pine Street, it's live bait only, and there are plenty of prizes to be won. Um, coming up again over in Forestville, very active part of town. Can't slow us down over there is May 5th. We're having the annual Pequabic River Duck Race. This raffle has amazing prizes with the grand prize of $1,500. Tickets are still $5 and you can purchase them at many local vendors, including uh, True Value, um, the hardware store, or the Parks and Rec. This Saturday, um, they'll be selling them at Stop and Shop in Forestville from 10 to 4. And the following two Saturdays on the Route 6, Stop and Shop. And you can also find a booth in front of the old Nucci's selling the tickets. And all proceeds benefit the Forestville Village Association. Um, I wanted to share, and I'm sorry, keep going. But on April 20th, again, you can do this in the morning, go to the drifters in the evening, is the city's annual citywide cleanup day. Um, starting at 8.30 a.m., you can pick up supplies, pickers, trash bags, gloves at 51 High Street, which is the um, parks office and youth services office, and then head out to your own neighborhood to clean up. Um, let's all go out and get those nips and other uh, litter. Um, and so that will be on Saturday the 20th. And that is it for my announcements. So thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Sebastian, announcements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Seeing as it's uh, National Library Week, I have a couple items from the library here. Um, this Thursday at, at 1 p.m. at the library, uh, Newbury Honor winning author Rajani LaRocca will be our first youth author luncheon for a Q&A discussion and book signing. So I know last year you were there for our, our author luncheon at the um, the Double Tree. The library boards decided to build on that and try and uh, put on some some youth author luncheons and see how, how that uh, gets a response from some of the youth in town. Um, the author luncheons do great. Uh, lots of folks there. We actually had an event there uh, the other day, um, and it was uh, just a, a, the crowd. There was no seat down in, in the basement of the library. Um, related to actually the same author, there was a book giveaway, I think. So we're we're doing a uh, a youth uh, author lunch in there. Uh, the recommended age is nine and over. Uh, lunch is included. There's no fee, but attendees have to call the library uh, at five eight four seven seven eight seven extension three to register. Uh, so that's a good uh, inaugural event there for a youth author luncheon, and, and we'll see how that goes and see if we can get that annually going at the the library or in another venue. And try and get some kids interested in reading and, and sign up for library cards. Um, in addition, if you're at the library, pick up a passport to Connecticut libraries, which are available there. The passport to Connecticut libraries is a statewide program to encourage people to visit libraries statewide. There's 150 libraries participating uh, for folks to get their passport stamped as many libraries as they can. Two adults and two children will be chosen to win a $200 Visa gift card through entrance in the program. Uh, so if you go to the library, you can sign up for a library card. You can get a passport. They have more details about the program. And that's a month-long program that's running from April 1st to the 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Jackie. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Just uh, one small announcement. Um, just want to remind everyone that Public Works will be picking up leaf bags throughout the month of April. And I know it's been difficult to clean your yard with all this rain we've been having, but... 
That's what it is. So throughout the month of April, we're picking up leaf bags. Thanks, Jackie. Today was a nice day. Yeah, today, today was a nice day. All right. Bristol, uh, Bristol Parks and Rec will be doing this. Perry J. Spinelli Fishing Derby at Page Park. It'll be held on the 27th at 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Registration starts at 6.30, and registration is free. Uh, there are prizes for everyone, uh, as with last year. Um, the events is for children ages 2 to 13 years old. Participants should bring their own poles and bait. Please vi visit uh, Bristol Myrec for uh, a list of full rules and additional information. Next... The next day, April 28th, American Legion Post 209 will be having a fishing derby at Rockwell Park from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Registration from 6.30 to 8 a.m. It's also free. Uh, it's for ages 16 and under, two trout uh, per participant. Worms and mealworms will be provided for free. Steve's Top Dog Food Truck will be there selling uh, breakfast, and there will be trophies and prizes uh, that will be awarded. Also, it's National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and Youth and Community Services are at the parks. There was an event held today, but there will be another one held uh, Thursday, the 11th, at Rockwell Park from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There will be snacks, games, giveaways, raffles, and resources. Uh, all children, parents, and caregivers are welcome to attend. I also want to remind everybody that the work is now underway on the Jerome Avenue Bridge between Sturbridge and Coolidge Roads, so please find alternate routes uh, if you're going that way. For more information, it can be found in the Public Works website. And last but not least, um, I would like to congratulate Chief Morello for being appointed interim chief now that Chief Gould has retired. Great. Thanks. Uh, just back to the Jerome Avenue Bridge, we had a lot of questions. So just clarification for everybody, and hopefully people watch this again later. We don't have a crowd. But all of the businesses and the homes are accessible right. all the way up to the bridge. So it's just a bridge that's closed. So I know Sturbridge Road is right there. There's a package store. There's, um, you know, the, the park no center. Through. There's right. yeah. There's, it's just no through traffic. Yeah, basically. you just can't go through. The yep. bridge will not be accessible. So it's a pretty good detour. We just don't want people to go a mile down the street realize they got to come a mile back and go around. So thank you, Eric. Sue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple of repeats from last month. Um, I'll start with the Bristol Exchange Club's 2024 Honoring Heroes Dinner that will be held on June 27th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Aqua Turf. Uh, this year we'll be honoring three of our finest officers and um, a couple of cadets, and all the funds raised will be for the police memorial. For ticket information, you can go to the Bristol Exchange Club at gmail.com um, address and get more information. Um, also, a repeat from last month, just a reminder, uh, the Bristol Police Department will be holding a prescription take back on April 27th from 10 to 1 at the Farmington Avenue Walgreens location. Um, also, Bristol CERT, in, in coordination with the Bristol Public Library, is holding a an emergency preparedness for Bristol residents um, on Wednesday, April 17th, 6.30 to 8 p.m., um, and this is at the main location of the Bristol Public Library. I believe there's also a Saturday, April 13th session at 2 p.m. at the Manross Library. It was a little confusing online. So um, all you have to do is go to www.bristollib.com or call one of the libraries just to register. It is a free event. Also, um, I just wanted to mention the Carousel Museum has a program that they're doing on Sunday, May 5th from 1 to 3. Um, it is Girls in STEAM, and it's sponsored by the Women and Girls Fund at the Main Street Community Foundation. Um, I kind of read the description of this free event, and um, it sounds really exciting, something my daughter would have loved. Uh, for more information on that one, go to www dot the carousel museum dot org and there's also a very similar um boys event on may 19th so you can get information on either one of those thanks did we miss any announcements all right hearing none we will go on to number five which is the consent agenda cheryl i believe that you wanted to take off g you had a question about it but i'd love
leave it there. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to ask when we do it that we just add a little bit more clarification for everybody else. Remember on that one. Does anybody wish to withdraw anything else from the consent agenda? It's A through M. No, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda A through M. Second. And then, Cheryl, just for everybody, too, because typically we have more information in the consent agenda. And you had asked what the G was, which was the Wazinski way. We yep. Excellent. Yep. And uh, this is ARPA funding as well through that project. So that's good. All right. Uh, any other comments about the consent agenda? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody opposed? A motion carries. We will move on to our reports and committee reports. And we'll start with you, Sue, on three real estate items. Okay. Um, I'll start with 6A. Um, I will read the motion first. I hereby move that the following property be referred to the Planning Commission for a Connecticut General Statute 8-24 report. Map 02, Lot 129-2, Violet Drive. I further move that this matter be referred to Public Works to assess the pond on the lot. I further move that this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to prepare and to review any necessary documents. I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. Anything else to add, Sue? Just give a little background on where this is for people. Okay. Um, this is something that we have been working on. Um, this is a property that has been encroached, city-owned property that has been encroached. Um, but this has been a process because we've had to, uh, our court counsel have, has had to do a lot of work um, getting authorization and permission to be able to take this open space uh, property that was donated to the city of Bristol and for us to be able to clear that up and to be able to resolve the issue of the encroachment. Yep. Through the chair. Um, so this is just to refer to planning, but it hasn't determined the economic value of that land should there be any later on and um, recoupment back to the city, correct? This is just for the 8-24. And that's the same on the next one. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody opposed? Motion carries. And as we said, the second one is same type of situation, just different property. Correct. Um, I hereby move that the following property be referred to the Planning Commission for a Connecticut General Statute 8-24 report. Map 02, Lot 120-9, Candlewood Drive. I further move that this matter be referred to the Public Works to assess the pond and or wetlands on the lot. I further move that this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And the third one, Memorial Day is coming. Yes, it is. Um, I hereby move to grant to Forestville American Legion Post 209, the use of city-owned property known as 43 East Main Street, Map 41, Lot 8-1, a.k.a. the Loretti property, from May 24th, 2024 through May 27th, 2024, for a staging area for their Memorial Day Parade. I further move that the matter be referred to Corporation Council's Office for Insurance Compliance, I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. Any comments or questions on this one? 
Sure, I'll just give you forewarning. I'm not sure yet, but it looks like I have a family wedding Memorial Day weekend, so Uh oh. you might need to get a new partner to announce the Well, parade. I'm Maybe kind of maybe. on on hold too because you know I got a baby due. Well, not me. Okay, maybe, my first grandchild. We, we got my first you. grandchild is due June second, but I plan hopefully to be here for Memorial Day. All right, but uh, we'll, we'll make it work. Everybody be on notice then. Yeah. So that's Thank it's you. a fun event. Uh, it's the same thing we do every year there. So this is uh, very pro forma. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That motion carries. Sue, do you have any other committee reports? I think you were going to do something. On I'll just take a couple of minutes um, for code enforcement. Uh, we've been extremely busy as of late, um, and I'll just give you a few numbers just to kind of be able to reflect how how busy this team has been working. Um, in March, there were 36 new complaints. Um, out of those, and that's actually, um, so now from the beginning of the year till now, we're up to 111. Um, notice of violation letters, 32 went out in March. So we're up to 77 for the year. A total of follow-up visits in March were 163. Um, citation tickets that were issued in March, 11. Uh, we ended up closing 16 cases in March, and total number of site visits was 80, and we condemned one property in March. Um, there were no tall grass complaints. In yet. Yet. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> yet. Um, also, just with some tickets that were issued in the month of March, uh, the building department issued $6,680 worth of citations. And Public Works issued 2,844. That's for shopping carts and illegal bulk. Um, so we've been extremely busy this month. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Eric, any committee reports or board liaison? Um, board of Education, uh, last day of school will be June 18th, and that will also be graduation for high schools. Uh, there was a lot of public participation about gate fees, both for and against. So there will be a special meeting. Uh, held on the subject to uh, further discuss from the public and the board. The meeting has not been set yet that I've noticed. I've looked. Um, Bristol Housing Authority, David Hartley, started on the board uh, this past month and jumped right in. Uh, there was a discussion about some ongoing projects and upgrades to some properties. Uh, we addressed some maintenance issues that are going to get fixed. Uh, there was a tenant meeting at Bonnie Acres, Chief Gould, uh, Chief Morello, the mayor, Representative Hoxa, and myself attended. We listened to tenant concerns. Um, and are working to find some solutions. We will attend next month's meeting to make sure everything's moving in the forward direction. Uh, one issue has already been addressed, and that was the flushing of the hydrants, and that was done yesterday, I believe, if not today. Today. Um, so thank you to the Water Department for getting there quickly. Yep, they did Appreciate do that today. Thank them very much for that. Yeah, it was scheduled for yesterday, but I think it came out today. So. Yep. Perfect. Very good. I Jackie? Do, I do not have any committee reports, Mayor. Excellent. Sebastian? No reports. Cheryl. Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to share a couple of things that have come out of Public Works. Um, one is um, since the spring paving list came out um, and was published, we've all received phone calls. When am I, is my street getting done? Why not? And uh, Public Works has contracted out in the past to have the streets surveyed, and they're rated on a scale from 1 to 100. And using this data, coupled with knowledge of utility company gas um, and water plans, streets with poor ratings are designated to be milled and repaved. The co cost to outsource this was expensive, so it was contracted every three to four years. And at the last Public Works Committee meeting, we gave approval to enter into a contract with a service that will bring the technology to us at a significant savings. Using um, our own staff, we'll be able to rate our own streets annually, weekly, monthly, depending, you know, if we need. Um, it's not a one-time shot, and we can even collect data on the streets, the catch basins, and street signs that could be missing. And this data will be more timely, and the documentation can be archived, and we save money and we're able to address which streets need attention faster. So I thought it was a fabulous um, thing to share. You can visit this technology at their website, which is www.vialtix, that's V 
I A L Y T I C S dot com. Another thing out of Public Works is that the Connecticut Department of Transportation has announced a bus shelter replacement program. And the program appears to address bus shelters on private and city owned properties. So the Public Works Board, in collaboration with Transportation Committee, will be considering options. So if there is a need out there, please let me know or Public Works know so we can put this into our planning. Um, and another thing from Public Works I just wanted to share that was in the director's report. Um, we're fortunate we have a, a waste to energy plant right here in our community. And 70 towns that used to bring their waste to the Hartford plant no longer have that option because the plant was shut down. In this next market, they are going to be paying $131 a ton to dispose of municipal solid waste. That was an increase from their prior rate of 106. To let you know, in comparison, we're paying $74.20. So there is a huge economic benefit to the community and to the taxpayer um, by having a local facility. And sometimes we, we don't learn about those factoids and I love to share them. Um, on the animal control facility, we're very excited that we have selected an architect. Raw House, Friedenfeld and Associates has been chosen to design the new facility. The committee meets the third Thursday of the month at 5 p.m. in case somebody's interested in checking it out. Thank you. Yep, that's 12C on our agenda too, so good. Andrew. Unfortunately, I have nothing. All of my meetings landed on our budget hearings, ah. for one, so. Busy. I'm free for the month. Busy month. We're done with budget hearings for now. Okay. Uh, do we miss any others? No, we will move on to old business and a couple items on old business. I'm actually going to take an opportunity to do the first one. Um, Ray Rogozinski is actually on vacation this week, but I just wanted to alert you all to a memo that will come to Public Works uh, when he gets back to Public Works Board meeting. And we are uh, constructing the Hope Street Center Square parking garage that has started. They've started to do excavation. Unfortunately, they have run into unanticipated old foundations, and this is from before the center mall. So this is definitely going to create a little bit of a bump. There's, there is likely to be significant extra additional costs, but at this time, the cost is probably going to fall within the uh, included allowance. So he just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Um, it's unfortunate, but this is a very common occurrence now with projects. They all seem to be going over and they have to dig like five to seven feet around it further and make sure that the ground is stable. So um, more to come on that. But I just thought I would give you all the updates so that if we get a change order, which we might in, in the next month or two, um, we want to be prepared for that. I just have to add the importance of this garage. This garage now supports the carrier project. The garage obviously supports Wheeler Health, and I will share with you that there are other developers in the area that are coming to us for spaces as well. So I'm knocking on wood that we hopefully have more spaces that would either be, um, you know, leased uh, or sold to um, other developers. So it's important that we get this in and important that we stay on time. Uh, just as a quick update there, the carriers are still, I was in there last week, they are um, saying that they will open in December and they will have... Uh, renters and they have a lot of pre-leasing on their retail space as well and it looks like that wheeler health will open midsummer so that's the public works update jackie you had a question as well too that i want to bring up so i'll let you bring up the question today on an update yeah i i was wondering today um if fine fettle had opened for business because um the revenue from true leave has gone down so i thought maybe that Fine Fettle was taking business away from Truly. So, yep. So, I did take the opportunity to reach out to Ben Zachs, who is one of the um, proprietors and one of the, the founders of Fine Fettle. And he did give me an update, which I'm going to pull open on my um, phone. But before I get there, just to, to reiterate, the uh, revenues have come down about $5,000 this past month. 
However, the revenues are probably anticipated to go up when both stores are open. We're going to expect to see, I think, go the other way. Maybe not. This was just maybe a slower month. By the way, it is April. April is a very uh, important month for um, for cannabis, so maybe we'll see a difference. Through both. the chair, and, and I don't know if it addresses um, particularly Bristol, but I read an article recently that it's really there's not enough product in the state yeah. because if you recall, all the product that they sell – for retail has to be grown here in Connecticut. And this article addressed that that was leading to shortages of product yep. in, in the retail market. And so that could be what is affecting True Leaf's ability to have additional sales. But I, you know, this was an article broad across. I the think country. you're onto something because I'm going to read what Ben sent to me. And there's a little piece in here that uh, will will relate to that. So they're flying through construction. They expect the CEO may come around May 17th, barring any hiccups. The week of May 20th, all the security and IT gets installed. They've already scheduled the inspection for May 28th with DCP. They have to have that final regulatory side approval. Um, if everything goes well, they'd probably have an opening on June 14th through 21st. Um, by the way, all needs to go well, he's saying. We had initial delays and they had a bathroom. But what they're saying is depending on inventory availability for us in the state on the June 14th. So that would probably answer your question, but I think it gives everybody a pretty good update as to what's happening in that area. Any other questions or comments on that? Is there any other old business? And lawyers, we have anything? I don't think we have old business. Any council members? All right, we'll move on to new business. I'm not aware of any new business. Is there any new business? We will move on to uh, nine, which is resignations. We have two. Dave Berleski was a 2-9 from the ARPA task force. And Donna Friday resigned from the Bristol Burlington Health District. Great. Through the chair, I would like to... Um, Put these resignations on file and have a letter sent to both um, individuals thanking them for their service, please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Um, I'm going to start out with the first one. So uh, ARPA, I would like to entertain a motion to reappoint Dave Proleski. Um, he has been busy traveling. He actually thought that his excused absences would prevent him from being 2-9. We are at the very tail end of a lot of the hard bulk work for ARPA. Um, and so it, it doesn't make too much sense to go out and find new people to be on that task force. So I will entertain a motion to reappoint Dave Perleski. So moved. Second. Comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. For arts and culture, I actually have two. You might have three that you saw listed, but we're going to hold off, right? Right, and, we're going to hold off. So we are going to reappoint two members, uh, Walter Lewandowski and April Dews. Uh, they both expire now for 27. Move okay. approval. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Andrew, I know you're looking at me. I'll, I'll just oh, go ahead. We're not sure. April is still may come back off, but. We will for we'll, now. We'll reappoint her for now. Right. Okay. Is that what you were? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Not a problem. On the Energy Commission, uh, we have had probably one of the longest openings that we've had. So I'm very pleased to announce the appointment of Thomas Hick. And that will now expire 427 because the previous people have long expired. So it's a three-year term. Can I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. Second. Very good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Um, on the parking authority, I would like a motion to replace Michael Potosa and appoint Amy Lowry. And that term will expire on 427. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And then the Opioid Task Force, uh, we have a young lady who's also interested in the Arts and Culture Commission. So Cheryl's going to get with her to see if she can fill the other open spot there. Um, but she does have some experience on, on with opioids and wants to get involved. That's a task force um, that doesn't require any expiration, and we continue to grow that. So I'll entertain a motion to appoint Julie Christ to the Opioid Task Force. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. We have, uh, let me see, count this up quickly, about seven or eight potential vacancies for May. 
Uh, there are a couple that turn over at this point and a couple of these resignations now that we need to take care of. So if you have people that are interested, please get them to us. I will just also parenthetically, and maybe I should publicly thank Mike Petosa for his service. I think he's been on the parking authority for in excess of 20 years. Um, and unfortunately, due to changes in party affiliation on that board while people were serving, Mike be, Mike was the first to term to either end, resign, or, um, you know, need to, so we needed to replace him, the short of this is, because we had too many Democrats serving. So uh, we need to find unaffiliated voters to serve on these boards and commissions because they balance things out well. Uh, well. So uh, my apologies to Mike Potosa, but unfortunately by our minority representation, he wasn't able to continue to serve. That's all I have for appointments. And now we will move on to number 11. I see Chief Hart here as well. Um, this is a, uh, a contract for uh, the Bristol with the Bristol Fire Department and Safety Priority Consultants. So I'll entertain the motion if somebody wants to read that for me, Andrew or somebody else. Andrew's on fire. You got it in front of you. Open it. I think you can read it right off the um, right off the agenda. I'll just read it off the agenda. Yeah, I make a motion to approve the retainer agreement between the City of Bristol Fire Department and Safety Priority Consultants, LLC, and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute the agreement on behalf of the City of Bristol. Second. Great. And Chief Hart, I'll, I'll ask you to come up. I'll give a high level here and you can answer questions or add more. Um, but I actually talked with Chief Hart today because we just put on point man safety, which does a lot of workers comps and things like this. This is very specific to the fire department um, on with their OSHA upgrades that are required and it's a complicated process. So I'll let you talk about it a little bit. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah. Safety priority. I uh, watched a webinar uh, sponsored by the Connecticut Career Chiefs Association uh, with uh, New England OSHA to give an overview of the changes that are coming down the pipe for the fire service uh, with the changes to the OSHA 1910-156 uh, standard that governs fire brigades. They incorporate municipalities and private uh, fire departments within that regulation now. Um, so it's going to be a huge change, a, 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 a enormous seismic change to the fire service because now they're incorporating by reference 22 of the NFPA standards, which means any sentence or uh, reference within the standards that have shall or must has the force of law uh, within OSHA. So we have to make sure that we're compliant. We're doing well on most things, but um, there are some um, standards that we really have to get the, the devils in the details as far as um, uh, making sure we're compliant so that we don't run afoul of uh, OSHA. So um, I met with Chip Darius from uh, Safety Priority. His, I thought I had a pretty decent resume. His puts mine to shame. It's it's probably eight or 10 pages. He is a, an OSHA, uh, OSHA guru um, and is going to be a huge benefit for the department and the city to, to protect us. Um, and coming up with a plan to um, be make sure we're compliant with the uh, new OSHA regulations. With the retainer agreement, I did run that by Corp Council. They vetted it, um, said it was okay. Um, and he <clears throat> is willing to start uh, as soon as we get the agreement signed. Questions for Chief? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, oops, lost my agenda. Uh, we're moving on to number 12, which is contracts. We have a quite a few contracts. And Roger, I know that you and um, Jackie had spoke. So maybe we'll do first a little bit of a Q&A on how the contracts work, because I think Jackie has a question, and then we'll take them one by one after that. Well, my question really pertains to G of the contracts. So and I'm not going to go through all the other ones that 
as far as the boiler replacements and the fire alarm. Um, this is more of a curiosity type of question, Roger. Yeah. It was we as noted, Holzer Electric was awarded the bid for Hubble for the fire alarm panel. Um, so I, I was trying to get a logical explanation as to why the bids from the same company are so different for each school. For example, Holzer, um, their bid for Hubble was 277000 Bristol Eastern High School, their bid there was 1,350,000 and Bristol Central was 1,685,000. So is it because the fire alarm panels are different? So um, the name is a little misleading in terms of what the contracts are and that's a big part of it. Um, it's not just a panel that we're replacing several years ago we went through and had replaced some of the fire panels with some of the tools and found that when you upgrade to the new technology, it changes the wiring associated with all of these uh, panels that are out there connecting to the devices. So you don't end up just replacing the panel, you replace the devices that are in each room as well as the wiring that goes to each room. So in Hubble School, it's a significantly smaller footprint. So given that, there are a less number of devices that are out there and less lengths of wiring that go into there. By the time you leave Hubble School and you get to Bristol Central and to Bristol Eastern, it's significantly more acreage. Um, I mean, it's just, was it 120,000 square feet per building? It's just enormous structures. So to run that wiring, that amount of difference, that amount of distance, is just cumbersome. And I think that's one of the reasons why you might see some of the companies giving different numbers on the different projects, because I think they recognize that these projects are so large that they're not able to do all of the projects at once. So they'll put in a good number for one site and target that one site and then say, I know that I'll get that one. And I'll put in another number if they all of a sudden give it to me for the other one. And I'll just go out and hire crazy people to do it. Um, but they recognize that it's an enormous scope of work for these projects. Yeah, I actually was wondering if the size of the school had anything to do with it. So yeah. that's a great explanation. I appreciate it, Roger. Thank you. I do applaud the Board of Education for reacting really well to try and manage their ARPA spend. As you may recall, they had planned to do an air conditioning upgrade to Chippens Hill Middle School. And at the 12th hour had to retool because the cost for that project was through the roof. So they ended up coming up with a series of smaller projects that you'll see here. Most of them are here, but there are other ones that we've already taken care of, such as the building management systems controls at all the buildings. We've already started that one and they'll be well finished well before September 30th. But so far, I think they've spent roughly five and a half million dollars of the eight million. So uh, at least that's what I've seen for projects. And there may be other ones that they've done as well that I'm just not thinking of. So they've done a very good job. Yep. And that ESSER art money is done at the $8 million. They don't have any more. And this is all time bound now. So that's right. why we're seeing so many contracts at once as well, too. So I appreciate you bringing it up. And hopefully that answered your question. Or you have another. One more. So as far as the boiler replacement now, why would the bids on that be so different? So I'm not really sure why. I mean, the boiler contracts are, are, are challenging to work with some of these companies because the projects are diverse themselves. Uh, the high schools, for example, are much larger because they need to send that much more heat around there. But also, they're quite a bit more aged. And that's one of the challenges that you'd have is that we don't know what's inside of these boilers. So we have allowances contained within the specs to deal with asbestos on the outside chance that there's asbestos in the ribs. So they can't go into those ribs until there are no kids in the school. Well, first of all, until the heat is closed down, which typically speaking would be April 15th. But they would then wait until there are no kids in the school to dig into them, tear them apart, and see whether or not there's asbestos that then they need to set up a containment. 
the bids do have an allowance for those sites that if there is no asbestos in the ribs, that we would then get a credit back for work that's not done toward it. All makes sense. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. I think we'll be able to kind of fly through these. We are going to do them one by one um, because they all require votes. But Roger, if we have additional questions as we take them up, I'll let you know. So if somebody could read uh, 12A for me as a motion. I can read it. To award contract 2024-081 curbing and sidewalk repair program to Martin Levera Contractor Inc. in the amount of $188,470 and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to effect said, said contract. Second. Any questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. B? Keep going, Jackie, you're doing well. You earned it. Put the <laughs> to award contract 2024-082, permanent patch of utility trenches and city streets to Laden Industries, LLC, in the amount of $152,085, and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to effect said contract. Second. Questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? A motion carries. 12C. Can I read C? Yes, my yeah, yeah, we'll do some public <laughs> work. Go ahead. We'll, we'll shift it up here. Don't All we? right. To award, I make a motion to award contract 2P24-032, Architectural Engineering Services, relative to construction of new animal control facility to Rahaus Friedenfeld and Associates, LLP, in the amount of $268,584, and to refer to the Office of Corporation Counsel for contract review and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to effect said contract. Second. Right. Cheryl, anything else to add? You talked about the, the animal control facility a little bit. No, um, you know, we had, um, you know, I think I received around 10 proposals, eight, and uh, we narrowed it down to three that we brought into interview. And we left, um, and I think the committee was in consensus that two really um, addressed our biggest concerns, um, which was the welfare of the animals and the humans that would take care of them and from an environmental and to make the facility less stressful. Um, to ensure, you know, that they would have a peaceful time when they stayed with us and that uh, the facility would enhance adoption. And um, after working out the prices, this was the firm that really had the consensus overall from the committee. Excellent. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, this one's Erica. So go ahead, Cheryl, I'll let you go again, then we'll switch it around. Okay, um, this is... E. Oops. Oh, I didn't have D. Oh, hold on. Give me a second. I got it. I got it. I, got it. <laughs> I had the um, boiler one. It took its place. Okay. Um, all right. I would like to make a motion to approve contract from Cot Systems, Inc. for Vitals Index add-on dash vitals index data conversion and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to affect said contract and re to refer to the board of finance for any necessary action. Second. Great. Any questions on this one? We have Erica here too, if you had them, but this is our, okay. our perfunctory stuff and the next one will be similar too. So Cheryl, get ready. All those in okay. favor. Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. You could do it right off, I believe, the agenda, too. It's the same motion. Okay. Let me just... Uh, e. I went too far. Okay. To uh, make a motion to approve contract from Cot Systems, Inc. for marriage backfile services and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to affect said contract and to refer to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Is anybody opposed? Motion carries. So now we move on to some of the school stuff. Eric, will you do F for me? Is it school stuff? Award contract. I'm going to make a motion to award contract 2C24-88 for 088 boiler replacement at EP Hubble School 
Modern Mechanical Systems, Inc. in the amount of $434,000 and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Second. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Do the other one for Hubble for me, Eric. Reward contract 2C24-089 fire alarm panel replacement at DT Hubble School. L. Holzer Electric Company in the amount of 277000 to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Go ahead, H. This is the panel for Bristol Central Court. Correct, H. Uh, to award contract 2C24090, fire alarm panel replacement at Bristol Central High School to Banton Construction Company in the amount of 698000 and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Second. Comments or questions? We sure we should do this for Central? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I was just joking because we're going to do Eastern now, my alma mater. Yes. Yep. Uh, I would make a motion to award contract 2C24-091 boiler replacement at East Bristol Eastern High School to Air Temp Mechanical Services, Inc. in the amount of 599600 to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And we get another one for Eastern because they're... I'd like to make a motion to award contract 2C24-092 fire alarm panel replacement at Bristol Eastern High School to L. Holzner Electric, Com Electric Company in the amount of 1350000 and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. We have one more for Chip and Sale. Let me read it. Go ahead. I make a motion to award contract number 2C24-095, boiler replacement at Chippens Hill Middle School to Crest Mechanical Services, Inc., in the amount of $369,365, and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Second. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? And Sebastian, I haven't picked on you, so I'm going to ask you for the resolution, if you would, on 13. And if it's long, I, we could waive the reading of the resolution, if you'd like. Make a motion to waive the reading of the resolution. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And now just generally the resolution, which I think you can read off of. Uh, sure, I make a motion to pass resol a resolution to approve the city application for a $6,850,000 grant for the CT Department of Economic and Community Development for the Route 72 Corridor Improvement Project. Second. Great. And any conversation on this one? This is the um, CIF grant application. Remember, this is really going to focus on the first part of the Route 72 uh, area, which is Park Street. And then there'll be kind of a combination, but more of a Connecticut DOT part for Riverside Avenue. So this is a resolution, so we need to do a roll call vote. Councilmember Howe? Yes. Councilmember Olson? Aye. Councilmember Paniotto? Yes. Councilmember Rosengren? Yes. Councilmember Tebalt? Councilmember Tyler? Yes. And the mayor? Yes, passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, number 14 is the executive session. Uh, everybody will come into us executive session on the council, lawyers, and? And our outside council, yeah, attorney Buckinger as well. Okay. Uh, I entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. We go into executive session. Unmuted and just a reminder, uh, no votes were taken in executive session. I'll entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? 
Motion carries. We have a motion. Cheryl. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hereby move that the city of Bristol enter into a full and final settlement in the matter of Daryl Rolanter versus city of Bristol for any and all workers' compensation claims filed by Daryl Rolanter for the total amount of $80,000. <clears throat> The dates of these claims are listed below, but are not limited to the following. May 29, 1991, March 5, 1992, April 20, 1992, <clears throat> excuse me, June 4, 1992, August 26, 1992, December 10, 1992, August 3, 1993, June 27, 1995, May 12, 1997, April 6, 1998, May 26, 1998, March 29, 1999, April 16, 1999, January 30, 2001, August 27, 2001, March 12, 2002, July 9, 2002, February 10, 2003, November 17, 2003, February 19th, 2004, May 24, 2004, October 18th, 2005, October 24th, 2005, October 10th, 2006, November 11th, 2006, March 5th, 2007, March 6th, 2007, May 31st, 2007, November 2nd, 2007, June 5th, 2008, August 20th, 2008, November 3rd, 2008, October 23rd, 2009, July 14, 2010, July 26, 2010, July 29, 2010, August 28th, 2011, November 25th, 2011, November 20th, 2013, April 25th, 2014, November 12th, 2014, November 20th, 2014, December 9th, 2014, July 11th, 2016, September 30th, 2016, October 11th, 2017, January 22nd, 2019, June 2nd, 2020, June 22nd, 2020, and February 24th, 2021. I further move that the mayor, acting mayor, corporation counsel, or assistant corporation counsel be authorized to execute the full and final settlement. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I don't believe we have any other business to come before us, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>